To get up and running quickly with the Click Ethernet PLC, just connect your computer with an Ethernet cable and start the Click software, version 2.0 or later. For this video, we'll assume we have a brand new Click PLC and we don't have an existing project. We could start a new project, write our ladder code, and then connect to the Click PLC, or we can connect to the Click PLC right away and then write our ladder code and test it as we go. It doesn't matter which you choose. I prefer this one because it makes me feel better to know I'm connected to the actual hardware before I start. So we'll hit that one. That brings up the Connect to PLC dialog. We want to connect via the Ethernet port, and if you have multiple Ethernet adapters like I do, make sure you select the one that Click is connected to. Do we want to connect to a local Click PLC on our local network, or do we want to connect to a remote Click PLC? Our Click is local, so we'll select that one. We'll cover this outside this LAN option in other videos on port forwarding and VPNs. Well look, as soon as you select the right Ethernet adapter, the software automatically scans the network and finds all the clicks currently connected. We just have this one of course, if we add another one, we can hit refresh to get it to show up. Now just to be sure this is the right one, let's hit the blink LEDs button. Sure enough, we're connected to the right click PLC. Perfect. But wait a minute. It's on a different subnet than my PC's Ethernet adapter. This is the default IP address that comes with every Click PLC. We need to change that, so we select it and hit Edit. Let's change that to be on the same subnet as the PC so they can talk to each other. And just like that, the COM port on the Click PLC now has this IP address. Now we just connect to the Click PLC. The software is reminding me that there's no project in the Click PLC. We know that, it's a brand new Click PLC right out of the box. Of course, it has nothing in it. Hit OK, and now we're connected to the Click PLC. If we go to the COM port setup dialog, we see port 1 is Ethernet, and port 2 is RS-232. We want to set up the Ethernet port. Well, look at this. The software automatically filled in the COM port settings for us based on the IP addresses we just entered in the connection dialog. We're ready to go. Let's write the world's shortest program and write it out to the PLC. Yes, we want to save it, and take this project on the PC and write it out to the PLC. We're going to include the project file and we're going to do a runtime edit. Do it. Well, that's it. We just wrote our first project to the Click PLC via Ethernet. Let's disconnect, add one line of ladder code, and reconnect to the PLC. We see the Click PLC and he is on the correct subnet, so we connect. The software sees that the current project and the PLC project are different asks us which one do we want, but well, we want our new project, not the one on the PLC, so we select Don't Read from the PLC button and hit OK. Great, we're connected, but with our new project. Now here's a key point. Suppose we're working on some other than PLC project, and then connected to this one the PLC. Well, the Ethernet port setting the project might have been set up to work with that other than the PLC, so it's always a good idea. Good news is, if you try to write the project out, the software sees the mismatch, shows you the IP address of the current project and the IP address of the Click PLC, and it lets you fix it with one button press. Now the project is in sync with Click PLC, and we write it out like we always do. So the bottom line is, even if you forget to update the IP address of the project, the Click software helps you get back on track. How cool is that? So other than setting up your Ethernet connection, the only other Ethernet specific difference here is you can use a send or receive instruction and select the Ethernet port and it is specified in the IP address you want to talk to. Other than that, it's the same easy to use, reliable click software you can always use. The benefits of the Ethernet are amazing. You've already seen a few of that. First, the download speeds are so much faster. Here's a decent sized click program on the Ethernet CPU. Exact same program on a non the same CPU. I'll start to download on the non Ethernet CPU and then start to download on the Ethernet CPU. Well, look, the Ethernet CPU is done downloading already. The older CPU, well, it's going to take another 20 seconds. 
Since we have both these set up, let's put them both in run mode. Open up the online project information dialog for both and see a side-by-side -side comparison of the scan time. The Ethernet CPU scan time is around 3 milliseconds and the non-Ethernet CPU is around 19 to 20 milliseconds. The performance increase you get will depend on your ladder code and your coding style, of course, but you can expect Ethernet CPUs to be anywhere from 3 to 10 times faster. So this 6, what, almost 7 times faster we can see here, that's pretty typical. The other cool thing about these new Ethernet CPUs is they support current edits. You no longer have to put the PLC in stop mode to transfer the program. If you try that with the older CPU, you get the usual message about stopping the CPU first. You then we have to restart the CPU when the transfer is done. With new Ethernet CPUs, do it seamlessly. And finally, one of the things that differentiated the basic and standard CPUs was that the basic CPUs didn't have clock calendar or battery backup. New Ethernet CPUs, the clock calendar and battery backup are included in the basic modules. So the only real difference between the basic and the standard modules on the Ethernet Click CPUs is the addition of a serial port.